Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Sunday, November 27th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR, guys. Start with a bit of preamble. Explain the gong show of the last couple of days. Yesterday, every single thing that could go wrong with my PC pretty much did. Murphy ensured that. Uh, blue screens, check, audio issues, mic issues, video card issues, editing issues. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, it was just a, it was a gong show. It took, I think it's actually closer to about 10 hours before I finally got the video out. Went to sleep around 3 a.m. So it was a late release. Needless to say, no gaming. So I'm going to make up for that tonight. Uh, that also means that I've been neglecting the comment section, which, and I, I love the interaction there. That's the only reason I haven't gotten to it. I think I got to maybe three comments since Friday, yesterday's news. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be catching up with those uh, probably on my breaks at work. But uh, tonight is going to be about gaming for sure. Also, more gear, uh, gear VR content coming. I know I used the Note 7 as an excuse for a while. But uh, yeah, I've kind of had my Galaxy S7 for almost a month now. So I can't really rely on that excuse anymore. I've got a good program to record stuff. So I will be featuring more gear, uh, gear VR as well. Let's jump into the first news piece. Let's talk about Dark Souls and... Some exciting Dark Souls VR potential news. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, here is uh, Dark Souls 2 and number 1 for the PS3. I also have Dark Souls 3 for PC, which is the best version. There was an offshoot called Bloodborne for the PS4. But the game that really got the traction going for the series, because there were ones before it called Kingsfield... They were PlayStation 2 and PlayStation games, but they didn't catch people's imagination like that game right there. Demon's Souls from From Software was the game that put these guys on the map. It's an RPG game. It is very difficult, but fair. And one of the best RPGs, action RPGs, I've played this millennium. And that's saying a lot. So what's the news regarding virtual reality? Well, at the 2016 Golden Joystick Awards, host Julia Hardy had series uh, creator Atsuo Yoshimura backstage and, and asked, you know, what's your take on VR? You for or against it? Do you like the idea of it? And the zinger, are we going to see Dark Souls in VR? Because that would be so terrifying. And his response, shocking, but in a good way, yes. Before further clarifying, he said that he's hoping to produce a Souls VR title. And the article goes on to say, With such pressure from Hardy with her barrage of questions, Yoshimura may not have wanted to reveal that bit of information as soon as this. PlayStation VR has a solid stable of games thus far, but having a franchise as deep as the Souls games coming to the platform would be monumental. Absolutely. I also think... It's the perfect game to translate into virtual reality. The way it handles combat, it's very visceral. Combat is very... It's very much about learning the nuances of not just your opponents, but your weapons, your abilities, and those two elements coming together. And it's a combat system like, like no other. It just makes every single combat encounter literally between life and death, which is which is awesome. Not like the Doom 3 variety, which is more, you know what, uh, you get shot a few times, oh well. No. Instant killers in Dark Souls happen frequently. If you're not careful, your game will be over very quick. So I'm super excited about that, and I will definitely update if I hear anything more on that. Super excited. Now, next up, VR allowing parents to meet their unborn children. I still remember, and it was about 21 years ago now, holy crap, it's going quick. In the beginning of 1996, Ultrasound, my unborn daughter, and looking at that picture, and to us it was amazing, even though you really couldn't see much, and mostly kind of got polite, but really blank stares from other people, right? You know, they say the polite thing, oh yeah, awesome, beautiful, your child, but really they couldn't make it out there, right? 
that's come a long way since those, you know, uh, darkened ultrasound pictures of the 80s, 90s, etc. There's a doctor in Brazil, uh, Heron Werner Jr., and what he's managed to do is combine traditional ultrasound images with magnetic, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, to scan parts of the womb and create a highly detailed 3D model of the unborn child. That you can view using a virtual reality HMD. So very cool. I probably got a couple of pictures up here right now. Suddenly, it doesn't look like, you know, kind of a smudge on a picture on the ultrasound. It actually looks like a person, you know, starting that growth, the evolution of a child, which is very, very cool. And I'm sure for parents uh, that are interested in seeing that, that will be a whole new dimension of keepsakes. And put a little bit of a different meaning on the first picture, right? Because a lot of people will say that about ultrasound, but like I said, can you really tell from a lot of those older ultrasounds? Not really, <laughs> not really. Next up, Live Like VR. Uh, the headline is the world's first virtual reality platform to watch live sports with friends. And that's kind of the differenti uh, differentiator for this company. What they're trying to do is turn the sports event into something like a social event that you can experience with your friends. You can have a virtual suite and it's got you know stuff from the teams that you're watching inside from any camera angle whether you're on the sidelines whether you're up in the nosebleeds whatever the angle is you get that perspective from this virtual suite see each other in the virtual suite it even doubles as a broadcast studio meaning you can watch multiple camera streams at once you can focus on one you can have a set while your friends have a set. So I like what they've done. They've really just kind of moved away from taking traditional media and simply broadcasting it as 360, which can have some strange effects and that actually can diminish the experience at times. I like what they've done. They've kind of worked and embraced 360 as something separate, something that they've built around with this virtual suite, with the social component. So very, very cool. That's live like VR. They've got agreements with quite a few sports franchises at the college level in the US, as well as the pro level. And uh, Fox Sports is uh, one of their partners. So I'm expecting some cool things from them in the future. Hopefully, hopefully some hockey. That would be awesome. But I think it's NBC in the States that has uh, the hockey rights currently. All right, next news headline, Building Blocks, a deep dive into Leap Motion Interactive Design. I really like this article on Leap Motion's blog because it gets into the really deep details of what they're trying to accomplish with their gesture technology. So for anybody who doesn't know, Leap Motion has been working on getting full VR recognition of human hands all the complex motions that we can do, whether, you know, it's a thumbs up, throw up the horns, this one, that one, all of those gestures, to the point where they've split their kind of design philosophy into three distinct sections, which is really cool. The first being direct. And direct follows the rules of the physical world, occurs in response to ergonomics, and affordance of specific objects with no extra learning required. And the example they provide for this is pushing an on off button in VR. Pretty much everybody understands that's a universal thing. You push a button, it's on off. So that's kind of the first section. The, the next is uh, metaphorical interactions. So partially abstract interactions, but in some way still relating to the real world. And the example they give for that is pinching the corners of an object and stretching it out. So on the one hand, it's learned, but it's got its roots in the real world, which brings us to the third kind of design aspect, which is completely abstract interactions, totally separate from the real world that have their own logic, which must be learned. Now, the examples that I gave at the beginning with the thumbs up and you know that and that, all examples of ones that we have to learn. 
And my mom had a few, she says, are from uh, Germany, the uh, Dubis Dof, which is the tapping on the forehead. She used to love doing that for some reason, driving. That was kind of her road rage. I don't know if they still do that in Germany. I haven't asked my cousins or my family members, but that was one of her favorite. And there's a few others, but again, they're learned. And because unless you know, it could be anything. If you imagine being an alien, you, you know, give the, the UK version or the kind of North American version of the middle finger, no one's going to know what that means. Unless they have something in their culture, like a handshake, they wouldn't even know what that means. Reaching out a hand could be perceived as threatening. So um, I really like what they've done here. Have a look at that. It's, it's pretty complex and deep, but that's what makes it so great. They've taken just this whole notion of gestures in VR and really built a design philosophy around it that I think makes absolute sense. And I cannot wait until some of their stuff starts appearing in VR. That's just going to be amazing. I mean, you think about it now, we've got, like I said, these static hands, like raw data. There's not much, it looks great, there's not much interaction with them. Once something like this is in place, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, next up, this one has me really excited. Being such a history geek like I am, and geography geek, the Indian subcontinent, for me, is not only a place I want to visit, but... The history of India is just absolutely awesome. <laughs> and it's so deep and so vast. You could literally just spend a lifetime digging into Indian history. Now, there's a movie and it's called Bahubali, The Sword of Bahubali. It's like a uh, trilogy historical film. And it takes place during the... Mahishmadi Kingdom, which was a kingdom that went kind of into the 13th century, occupied most of what would now be central India, so the middle portion. And they have spared absolutely no expense on this movie. But the reason I'm mentioning it is the trailers for the movie, the behind the scenes for the movie, have all been done using virtual reality. And I think it's a really cool example of grassroots, nothing to do with the big four, right? Your Samsungs, your Sonys, Oculus, HTC. This is something completely from India, homegrown grass movement, uh, grassroots movement from a movie they created to highlight the trailers and the experience of the movie. And it's been really catching on in India, super popular uh, using the Google Cardboard uh, type of distribution to be able to view it. And I mean, have a look at the trailers. I'm going to include it. I'm actually trying to locate an English subtitled version of the movie. I really want to see it. It just looks amazing. It's not your typical, you know, Bollywood style movie. It's actually, I forget what it is, but it's um, um, the movie industry in the South. It's also released as a trilingual movie. So Telugu, Tamil, and Hindi languages also been dubbed in several others. I have managed to locate an English subtitled version. So, uh, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. Also trying to get my hands on this uh, VR teaser. I've located it. Haven't had a chance to download it. Literally found out about it before or during prepping for the news for this episode. But, uh, yeah, the movie, again, is called The Sword of Bahubali. And it's the VR teaser for that. I'll have links. You can check that out. Next up. Most of us in VR probably get asked the question, you know, what the hell is VR? And we got to try to explain it. And sometimes it's just easier, especially if you're talking with somebody online, than to try to text type a description of VR, send a link. <laughs> and uh, SciTech Today, which is a science website, has what they're calling the 2016 Complete Guide to VR. And it literally covers everything, A to Z, the different uh, forms of VR that are out there, experiences, games, sports. I would say 80% of what we cover on this channel, they kind of cover in summary form. So you can send people that link, nice and easy to read, and say, you know what, you're not going to really get it until you try it, but for now, have a read of this. It does a good job of explaining VR. Next up, 
And this is the uh, last news piece, VLC, which is a very popular media player. It's one of my favorite just because it's so robust. It can pretty much do everything. If I'm watching stuff on the big screen TV here beside me, I'll run it off the computer, generally using VLC. They now support 360 degree videos. So VLC's creators, Videolan, have teamed up with 360 degree camera maker Gyroptic to develop the system. So it can display photos, panoramas, videos, and it's going to be made available not just for PC, but eventually mobile apps as well, so that users can navigate clips using the accelerometer in their phones. And not in yet, but soon available is going to be 360 degree audio support, including head tracking headphones, but no timeline for this. So some point in the future, that would be awesome. All right, guys, you know exactly what I'm doing right now, what I haven't been able to do all weekend, game. Cheers as always. Definitely, definitely tonight. Catch you guys on the VR flip side.